Welcome to this online conversation that's tied to our show about the changes in Washington and kind of the wish list for counties and the legislative offices about how things might change in Washington. So if you watch the episode, you will hear a list of some of the things that are important. But we had more than we could do in the broadcast half hour, so we decided to share them with you online. Joining us for the conversation, Wade Garrett from Congressman Chaffetz's office, Brett Milburn, County Commissioner from Davis County, Ryan Wilcox from Senator Lee's office. So um, you guys had a list you ran out of time for. Let's go on. Let's talk some yeah, more I about got, I got two more right off the bat. Let's go. Okay, Ryan. Start right so in on it, Ryan. <laughs> it's, hard, it's hard to pick among your, your favorite fantasy yes, scenarios. But, you know, obviously the Supreme Court mm -hmm. um, with the passage of um, Justice Scalia. That is, we're looking instead of just at four years, we're looking at 30 plus depending on who he nominates, of how it affects, you know, long term. Do you have confidence that the list that, that he talked about during the campaign is the list that he will work on? Because it seemed like a pretty credible list. I have, I have no reason not to right now. And he published it. He was open with it. Um, he campaigned on it. And I have to, I'm looking forward to taking him at his word. And, and as we have those discussions, we'll, we'll know soon enough. He, that's going to be yeah, number one on his, his agenda, right? It's what the whole country will be watching. I wonder so. if Justice Ginsburg is as interested in retiring now as she was a month ago. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I, I, I think she may try to stick out four years as just a half guess. So I don't know if she can, but I, I wouldn't be surprised if she tries. Interesting. So um, let, let's go on for the other. You, you had the list. You only one down on the two you wanted to talk about. Antiquities right? Act. Ah. Yeah, man. That yep. was on my list um, too. That was Supreme Court is insane. more consequential long term, which is why it's higher on the list. And I think the Reigns Act, I mentioned that because it's it's what I face every day. Yep. Right. In every conversation with uh, with folks around the state. Um, but uh, yeah, the Antiquities Act. Um, it's been the usage of the Antiquities Act has been extreme for a number of years. It has been abused. Uh, so far taken away from any kind of an idea of an originalist concept or understanding of the original legislation that um, it's almost not recognizable. It almost feels like it's used as a weapon in, yeah. in some it absolutely is. as well. Yeah. I had a conversation a, a few years ago with a geology professor from Utah State University who's contracted by the Department of Interior to study watersheds on the proposed monument, when it was a proposed monument. And he and his team spent an entire summer going all through all the watersheds down there, and they would make their recommendations and draw boundaries. And then they would send them to Interior, and Interior would change them and send them back. And they would look at them, and he had no idea about the re He's just totally oblivious to the coal and all these other things that were mm -hmm. in play. And they'd send them back, and, and he, he told me with great frustration, he said, they didn't make any sense is if their goal was to protect watershed and mm -hmm. they asked us to do it, they were changing boundaries that didn't protect anything. I have yeah. heard the same thing more than once about our last monument, and that is a concern, is that overreach, again, overreach is I think what we talked about and use of that Antiquities Act. So everybody's excited about getting like the monuments overturned, but it's not that simple. Is it going to take an act of the Senate and the Congress to do it? Uh, so we have looked somewhat into it, and yes, I know um, as we speak, uh, Congressman Bishop is meeting with the Trump transition team to see if there's other things that we can do, but what study we have done so far is Unfortunately, the power was given to the president to create a monument, but not to completely get rid of one. Now, there is some areas that we could change boundaries, do some things that the president could do and make a footprint possibly smaller, but really, overturning a monument is a congressional act that we would need the House and the Senate both to cooperate, and then we'd probably get into the filibuster problem. That is, that is consistent with what we've been told from our legal teams. Um, there are... That said, and this is important, it hasn't ever really been tried. True. There have been presidents who have attempted the conversation, who have asked their own attorney ge attorneys general, and who have, have gone down the study process. But in each of those decisions, they've come back and decided, we're not sure if you can do this, so we're going to convince Congress to repeal that monument. And so they did. In each of those cases that we've been able to find, Congress eventually went in and removed the monument Correct. in question. Um, that doesn't mean that, that a future President Trump uh, could not do this. It means that we're it not, is probably not we don't know. Uh, we yeah. <laughs> don't know the exact answer to yeah. that. 
it would be nicer just not to have it. And I think that's why that's probably on our wish list is to get rid of that entirely. Yeah. And, and to go along those lines, the next problem we have is the equal access to justice. I mean, mm -hmm. if we're going to go on a w wish list, um, some reform of that, the initial attend of equal access to equal access to justice was great. It it was, but it was perverted at the very beginning. It, it didn't even get Be, out of the because, box because that when it was in conference, all of a sudden that yeah. that NGO nonprofit mm -hmm. exemption. It wasn't just allowing them in to try and rectify exactly. abuses. It exempted them from all the financial requirements. Exactly. And nobody, as far as I can tell, nobody ever knows. Ex who actually put that in, but mm -hmm. it was neither in the original Senate or the House version of that bill. Is that not correct? That is correct from what we have looked into that, and, and it's caused us major headaches in the state of Utah. So what was intended to be a pretty good piece of legislation, if you look at the history, right out of the gate before it ever started, turned out to be... Wasn't that additionally compounded by the reduction of paperwork that Senator McCain put in? Because I believe correct. after that bill was passed, there was no more reporting, so we don't even know how much is being spent. I mean, I've made FOIA requests to try and get information right. about some of those expenditures, and the answer is, well, they don't exist. So right out of the mm. gate, uh, Congressman Chaffetz and, and our uh, new LD, Clay White, is going to begin working on, that's a piece of legislation we've already started to write, at least have a disclosure requirement that if you make that request that you can get that from FOIA so that is one of the very first low-hanging fruits that we're going to try right in the first of the first Congress. Wasn't well, Congressman uh, Lummitz uh, from Wyoming working on that? Yes yes it is something that we are taking that she was working on that is correct. Yeah okay. Well, good. Along, along the lines I guess in coming back to okay President-elect Trump and uh, potentially what his influence and whatever I'm encouraged even by what I heard on the news this morning regarding the new Air Force One and where you have uh, the the new plane that's, you know, it's a new 747. I think they said, you know, off off the lot it's 350-something million dollars, but then it's all the add-ons put it at about $4 billion. Oh. And he's putting the brakes on that. And, you know, that's something the American people just don't know. They don't, the, the, the detail to these things just isn't, hasn't been out there and because of you know, no access to paperwork or no reporting and, and no accountability. But here, I think at the end of the day, at least the next four years is an opportunity to reset a lot of things and it's, it's kind of exciting in some ways, it's kind of scary in others. So. This, this raises a kind of a question because President Reagan, everybody in, in my circles, well, most of the people in my circles think that he was he was pretty top notch. Be and one of his traits was he got around the media by going directly to the people, mm -hmm. but he knew how to appeal directly. And, and he had to have a certain buy in for media because there was no social media back then. But, but a president like Trump uh, seems to be able to bypass the entire media system by going to social media and just putting stuff out there, which may be a plus or a minus. What do you guys think of that? That's a good question. It's a, it's a, it's a new dynamic. It and, is a new dynamic. And the thing is, he's, he's, what I sense about Trump is he's not afraid to try something. I don't think it's, you know, it, sometimes it appears to be, you know, just half cocked. I, I think I'm learning to give him a little bit more credit than I think he is thinking a little bit further ahead. And, you know, he's, he's, not, willing, he's not worried about offending anybody. Well, that, that uh, that's <laughs> obvious, but, <laughs> yeah. but, it, but, it's, but it's a matter of, you know, he'll, he'll try something that's beyond the norm. That's, I, I, I agree that that's very possible. Whether that's true. always, what's, whether or not that's always the best thing or not. Final we, thoughts. We guys. might do something different. Yeah. Final thoughts, guys. Wait. If nothing else, it is a great opportunity that we didn't think was going to have a month and a half ago. Um, that we hopefully, as Ryan, and we each laid out some of our wish list, we wouldn't even be talking that they could be on the wish list had the election went the other way. So my th final thought is the other thing that I guess I didn't mention is that hopefully we return the power back to Congress and the Senate and they start doing things like it ought to be done. And if we could do that, then I have way more confidence than who even ends up to be the president if we go through order that the Constitution was set up to do. And instead of by getting the... Um, federal registry, 
that tells us what we're going to do by some bureaucrat that Congress is actually telling us what's going to happen. No, that makes sense. You know, I, I, along those lines, we'd be looking at, honestly, if, if there, we were looking at a Clinton administration right now, instead of talking about one, you know, 1.9 million acre monument in southeastern Utah, we'd be talking about at least four and maybe five in the next administration in the state of maps that we've already seen. So I am extremely optimistic about what this means for us right now and the opportunity that we have, at least for the next two years, uh, considering, you know, my role in the Senate, um, we're looking at a, a massive split in the cycle two years from now, mm -hmm. for Republicans anyway. Um, we're 25 Democratic seats are up and eight Republican seats. And a third of the Senate is going to turn over. Um, there is a very real possibility that if we do well um, over these next couple of years as a country, that we could be looking at that 60 vote threshold in the Senate in two years. You so buy yourself a two year extension to get something done. Really? And a real one. Yeah. Huh. You're like, yeah. you get the last word, Brad. Well, I, you know, I come back to this election is uh, kind of an opportunity to reset. Mm -hmm. And really for both parties to some, to some degree, but it's a real opportunity for the Republicans to uh, where they control all elements and then with the potential uh, in two years, uh, an even greater gain in the Senate. I just hope that everybody can, you know, roll up their sleeves and, and really get to work and and take some lessons, learn some lessons from what's, what's transpired. At the very beginning of the election cycle, if you, I would have, I would have never guessed a million years, this is where we'd be. Yeah, I, I but, probably wouldn't have guessed it but 45 it, it's, days ago. It's yeah, been, it's joined the club. But yeah, even, even that, but I would have never guessed that Trump would have been the nominee to begin with, but it's just been fascinating, and I, I think we really need to look a little deeper and study a little deeper. What what is in the mindset and what's the expectation of Middle America? Oh, I, and, I, I agree. And Another county seat, Chad. There you go. <laughs> Gentlemen, thank you for your time. Uh, if you want to follow more of this conversation or topics like this, we invite you to go through our YouTube videos, follow us on social media, and of course, tune in every week on ABC4 to the county seat. Thank you for joining us for this online special. We'll see you later.